ways as Trelegy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trelegy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trelegy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your Get 200 megabit internet and advanced phone for $69.98 per month with over 99.9% .9 network reliability. Call 833-919-2113. That's 833-919-2113. Hi, I'm Jane King, and thank you for watching. This show is all about public, private, and blockchain companies. We bring you the innovators behind the companies, making the headlines in that space. Some are sponsored, some are invited, all are curated and focused on telling you, the viewers, their story. Here we go. Vivo is an emerging biomedical device company focused on the licensing and commercialization of innovative medical devices for pets. And with me is the CEO, John Lai. Welcome, John. Good to see you this morning. Thank you, Jane. It's a pleasure to be here. So big accomplishment for Pet Vivo. You have achieved a major milestone uh, with your NASDAQ uplisting and the closing of significant financing. So congratulations on that. And kind of tell me a little bit about how does that position the company then going forward? Thank you. Well, it allows us to really aggressively push the marketing of Cush, our product for treating osteoarthritis, as well as bring in additional salespeople. I think our forecast is we're looking to bring in nine additional salespeople over the next 12 months. So it also positions us from the standpoint of really beefing up the production staff that will allow us to get the half a million units a year, which is significant. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure this is a growing area. Now, you deal specifically with osteoarthritis. So, and um, you're going to be treating canine, uh, equine horses. I mean, tell me a little bit about osteoarthritis. Like, how big of an issue is it with, with animals? Sure. In the United States, osteoarthritis, there's about, I would say, about uh, 4.8 billion market mm -hmm. for treating OA. But on top of that, it's been growing at 7% a year. And with COVID, it's actually enhanced that number because our dogs, believe it or not, just like people, gain weight. And when you gain weight, you have more arthritis issues. Uh, so we got a lot of drivers behind us as well as the humanization of the pets. So consumers are willing to spend significant amount of capital uh, to improve the quality of life. So they basically, you know, the numbers really drive itself through um, the typical person that was willing to spend treatment for a dog in 2012 was about $1,700 before they refused treatment. Okay. In 2020, it's uh, $10,700. So you see this in the Okay. Yeah, the humanization of the pet families really come in. And a lot of that's demographic drivers. You know, you look at less and less people are getting married, less and less people are having children, hence they're willing to spend whatever it takes. Plus, on top of that, you know, it's recession proof. The sector is very recession proof. That's true. And I, I especially in the summer in New York, there are pets everywhere. So all kinds of dogs, <laughs> sizes, big, little, you know. So yeah. now you have some stories about how you have helped pet parents. Can you share a couple of those? Sure. Um, not only do we treat osteoarthritis, but we treat other joint afflictions. Uh, so we had one dog uh, at nine months old, the owner got diagnosed, uh, the dog that had um, congenital birth defect. So its hip could not be used on the rear left side. Um, so the left leg was extremely small relative to the right leg. The right leg got really big because it was overuse. We did the injection three weeks before the owner noticed improvement. And the owner, after about six, seven weeks, said the dog was running pretty normal. And on that single injection, it lasted seven years, which oh. amazed us because wow. you know we the product should last at least a year, and we're seeing beyond that. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, and um, say when I, if I have a pet and I notice that they have some, they're walking slow, slowing down, something like that. What would be a good place to start? Can I just go to a vet or go on the line or what, what should I do? Well, you, you stand, generally go to your vet and then they do an x-ray. Uh, and a lot of them can tell just by the movement of the dog gating wise. So then at that point, you know, you're at, you, we're in the process of educating a lot of vets at the major trade conferences and so on about our product. Uh, it doesn't require any specialized training to do the injection. It's called an intraarticular injection. And you can actually, believe it or not, go on YouTube and punch an intraarticular injection. They'll show you every injection of every joint for a dog. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it makes the fun. I go, wow, this is pretty, uh, it's, it's not simple stuff. Your average person should not be trying it. You know, let the professionals do the injection. Okay. Uh, and within the, after the injection, generally within 48 hours, you notice a tangible improvement in mobility of the animal. And it actually improves over a period of time because the particles that are injected actually starts to form a scaffolding. And so that actually enhances the cushion that's allowed between the joints because that's where arthritis is basically bone on bone contact. So this augments the existing cartilage. So it tends to provide support for the existing cartilage so it doesn't get damaged. And then as it starts to uh, solidify, I would say, it acts very much like a massive amount of wet sponges between the joint. And every time there's impact, it actually moves the particles, which ends up lubricating the joint. And that's what your cartilage generally is. There's synovial fluid in there. And then when there's impact, the fluids move. So it functions just the same. Interesting. Now, right now it's for dogs and horses, right? Could it be applied to other animals? Yes, uh, the, uh, we'll be uh, probably launching a feline product within 12 months. And then after that, we'll probably be looking back, going into the human markets or other species. I mean, we have had a white Siberian tiger injected at the Seattle Zoo. We have had Billy goats injected in uh, the San Diego Zoo. And I talked to one of the vets and he asked, can he inject a bear? in uh, Florida, and I said, well, I don't see why not. We seem to have injected every animal that I know of. <laughs> Give it a shot, right. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay, so I guess the possibilities are endless. So where do you, I mean, you've had quite a year already. Where do you see Pet Vivo in five years, for example? Well, I believe we'll capture market share within the OA space, and then as we expand into other product lines, um, we'll get traction. And so we'll, we'll build a reputation of bringing uh, disruptive products to the marketplace because this is truly a unique way of addressing the problem of osteoarthritis. Um, we're the only one that I know that actually looks at what's causing it and try to help improve that situation at the bone on bone contact. All of our competitors have focused on creating a better NSAID because that's a gold standard of care today, but the problem that exists with NSAIDs is prolonged use will cause GI tract bleeding, liver kidney issues, also requires compliance of the consumer at least once or twice a day of giving that pill. Okay. So we have to think advantages over all the current therapies from that standpoint. Okay, interesting. Well, congratulations again. Best of luck, uh, John, with Pet Vivo. I look forward to getting more updates. Well, thank you, Jane. It's been a pleasure. Helios DX is defining a new era of reliable laboratory testing with fast, accurate results. With a full range of services, including urine toxicology, behavioral toxicology, infectious disease, allergy, and other popular test menus. Helios DX, an alternative to national diagnostic laboratories, provides value to patients and physicians through personable and reliable services. To learn more, visit heliosdx.com labs. Need hearing aids? Tired of paying $5,000 or more? Tired of making multiple? trips to have your hearing aids adjusted? Now you don't have to. Our Hear IQ 4 medical grade hearing aids are fully rechargeable, Bluetooth compatible, and started under $1,000 for a complete set or monthly payments of $44. Our hearing aids are self-adjusting using any smartphone and features remote programming by hearing care professionals without you ever leaving home. Order your pair today at myhearIQ.com.
Rushnet and Helios DX have had a lot of developments since we last spoke, which I guess was on a month or so ago. So with me is Ashley Sweat, the CEO of both companies to kind of explain where you've been, what you're looking forward to. So Ashley, welcome again. And I guess up, update us, let's start with Rushnet. So if you could update us on what's going on with Rushnet, kind of give us a, a real quick synopsis of what the company does too. Sure, thanks Jane, it's great to see you again. And uh, thanks for having us back. So uh, a lot of stuff changed over the last, you know, two or three weeks since we've spoken about um, with Rushnet. Uh, Rushnet officially this week has closed on its uh, acquisition, which I alluded to in the, uh, interview number one. So uh, Rushnet closed on Grand Asia Healthcare, um, which is the sister company of Helios DX, which was acquired by uh, Rushnet last month. Uh, Pretty significant uh, acquisition for Rushnet. It it, it uh, brings in another entity underneath the umbrella of Rushnet. So now you have Helios DX, you have Rushnet. Um, Grand Asia itself is it's about a year old company. Not quite. It, this is its inaugural year, I should say. So they've already completed uh, one point, just shy of one point one million annual revenue. We're projecting Grand Asia will do. About 1 1.6, 1 1.7 this year, this year in its first first year. Yeah. So tell yeah. me, how does it fit into the company, and what does Grand Asia do, and how does it move you forward? Right. Yeah. Um, so Grand Asia is a a billing and coding company in the healthcare space. So we we can bill for um, physicians' offices, other laboratories, diagnostic companies, dentist office. So really anything in the healthcare space uh, from a billing component, Grand Asia can have its hands. And um, it, it makes for a significant opportunity. It really spreads the spreads their wings a little bit out of the just the diagnostic space, which is what their their main business today is in the laboratory with Helios DX. But they currently build for a couple, a couple other laboratories. But moving forward, Grand Asia becomes the the flagship company of Rushnet. Um, and the reason being, as as we've discussed and we we press released a couple of times. Helios DX is working towards splitting off through uh, out of out of Rushnet, which the Rushnet shareholders are going to be given a, a nice dividend and, and be able to maintain ownership through shares. Um, so so Grand Asia, as we move forward into the future, really becomes the, the flagship company uh, for Rushnet. OK, so we'll talk about Helios here in a second. But first, any other plans outside of Grand Asia? where you might make another acquisition or another similar type business? Yeah, so we get asked all the time, you know, what is the future of Rushnet outside of Grand Asia? Is it just going to be Grand Asia? Is Rushnet going to change its name to Grand Asia? Um, the best way to answer that is, is Rushnet's essentially going to become like a, a business incubator, if you will. You know, I've been very fortunate to to have been surrounded by some really great people that, that allowed me to bring two companies that, that I own in the private sector to bring them into the public sector and, and never could have done it if I didn't have people around me. So you know, what I want to do with Rushnet moving forward as, as Grand Asia being the flagship company is we are going to go after, and you know I'm already talking to two or three other companies right now to, for acquisition to bring them in underneath Rushnet. Some of those companies will stay in Rushnet for the long haul. Some of those companies will follow the same foot footsteps that Helios DX is doing and, and will spin off and become their own, you know, publicly traded entity. And the advantage of that is really it's, it's twofold. One for the business owner itself has a great product they want to bring to the public sector, but two for the rush net shareholders, they get an opportunity just by, by being a rush net shareholder to not only grow with grand Asia, but to be able to grow with some other entities that may come in and spin out into the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you brought up Helios DX. So, and I understand you're in the process of spinning that off, right? So, where where does that company stand right now? What's its status? Yeah, so so Helios DX, we are we are working through the process of uh, doing a split off. Um, essentially, you know, it, it, there's there's a there's a lot that goes into that. So, Rushnet, as you know, or, or I mentioned previously, was a dark. Uh, shell prior to March when I took it over. So, you know, we, we've come a long ways in getting it up to uh, pink current, get the financials submitted. You know, right now the auditors are, are completing the audits for Rushnet over the last couple of years, completing the audits of Helios DX. Um, once those are done, we can then take the steps to, to start filing our paperwork with the SEC and, and really pushing that progress forward on Helios DX. But 
you know, in the meantime, while, while we're doing this, we're focused on the core business at Helios, being a diagnostics laboratory in infectious disease, behavioral health, uh, urine toxicology. We're growing that business. You know, you know we've grown uh, oh, well over 120 percent the last two years. That's great. Thank you so much, Ashley. Congratulations. And we'll talk again soon. Thanks, Shane. I appreciate it. Thank you. solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland using military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure is 100% private and does not collect or sell any of your personal data. Secure's Helix technology connects you securely to our Swiss servers without the need of a VPN, guaranteeing privacy and security for all your communications. Secure Messenger doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. Chat by Invites allows you to chat privately and securely with anyone outside of your secure network without the need for others to download Secure. Secure Send offers you a private and secure way to email anyone outside of Secure. You won't find this level of privacy or security on any other email or instant messaging application. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. Enjoy the bit. Need hearing aids? Tired of paying $5,000 or more? Tired of making multiple trips to have your hearing aids adjusted? Now you don't have to. Our Hear IQ 4 medical grade hearing aids are fully rechargeable, Bluetooth compatible, and started under $1,000 for a complete set or monthly payments of $44. Our hearing aids are self adjusting using any smartphone and features remote programming by hearing care professionals without you ever leaving home. Order your pair today at myhearIQ.com. Here we go. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Five, four, three. Global Wellness Strategies is a prospect generator that provides high growth companies with financial, operational, and management assistance in the fast growing market for wellness consumer products. And with me is the CEO and director, Maris Cott. Welcome, Maris. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, great to see you. So tell us a bit about Global Wellness Strategies. Well, we are a prospect generator, but we're focused in companies that are science-backed and data-driven. You know, we all know that if your mind isn't healthy, even if your body is healthy, it has to fit together. It's almost like a car with the correct petroleum in it. And so what we've decided to do is we've decided to focus on companies that really are discovery companies, more biotech companies, companies that are discovering new drugs, you know, not just the same oils that other people are using and just adding a little bit. And we're now focused more on the clinical study side of, of, of the business so that the science behind it is really backed with facts. Mm -hmm. uh, we are two years old uh, and we are traded on three exchanges. Mm. So we're looking for a global audience for the products of the companies as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I noticed that you just made an acquisition in Australia, right? So how did you find this company? What interested you to go all the way to Australia for an acquisition? You know, the irony is COVID has given us all great opportunities because we're connecting over we're connecting over the computer like our interview right now because I'm in Vancouver and you're in, I, I gather you're based in New York. Um, and so one of our investment bankers who had been an initial investor in our company from peak asset management in Australia brought us this company and said, these people are cutting edge. Uh, they've done two other projects with companies in Canada, one with Valence, an extraction company out of Vancouver. And we looked at what they, they had, and they were in the psychedelic space, which we all know is, a, is an amazing, growing, evolving space right now. But what they had was something that no one else had, 
they were doing research and development in pain management. Mm. And we couldn't, and, and we just said, you know, that's the basis of a lot of the problems that people have is pain management. And that's the, that's the basis of the crisis in, in, in the overdose of, you know, of, right. of FDA approved. And yeah. that's where we headed with them. And there, it's just an amazing acquisition for us. Very interesting. And you're right about the psychedelics. It's a very interesting space right now. So is this Shanti? Tell me about that product. Was this part of this acquisition or is that something else? No, Shanti is Shanti is this acquisition. It's called okay. Shanti Therapeutics. Mm -hmm. It's part of a cannabis company in Australia called Canvalate. And they believed that um, their psychedelic research should be in it, its own entity. So they founded Shanti Therapeutics and we are acquiring Shanti Therapeutics. Uh, it's, it is in the psychedelic space, but it's in the MDMA space. So we're not dealing with psilocybin. We're not dealing with LSD. It's very targeted. Uh, the gentleman who founded it is a um, anesthesiologist and his partner has done studies on pain I believe for the last two decades, and is also the medical director of um, the Swinburne Center for Neuropsychology. So these are actually doctors and researchers who are just taking their research to the next level. Mm -hmm. And what is their, their master plan uh, with that research in biotech? You know, they have a one-line mantra that I'm going to read here. It's pharmaceutical-grade psychedelic solutions to solve unmet medical needs in the field of chronic pain. Okay. They're looking to be the number one pain management company away from, you know, the current drugs, you know, their, their main concept here, let me get to one of their, they've, they've, their main um, uh, path here is to get to an IND with the FDA is to do uh, animal studies to start and then do human study, clinical studies, and then get to the point where they can apply for an IND with the FDA and the FDA will say, this is gonna change pain management. So we've looked around and they've, and through our research have found that they're the only company globally who's really focused right, taking MDMA, MDMA and focusing on pain management. Mm -hmm. They're looking at a pathway of, uh, you know, three months for the trial registration, six months, nine months, and a year to get the IND. They're very quick going forward. Um, that was what was exciting to us, that they're not looking at a three-year path because they have the connections and they have the strategic alliances. Thank you so much, Maris, for coming and, and telling us about the company and best of luck. And I look forward to our future conversations. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Enjoy the benefits of the world's first patented time-release hemp-based CBD topical cream. Our glass has achieved increased topical bioavailability of cannabinoids that slowly release our CBD over an extended period of time. Our glass is 99% CBD, THC-free and lab tested and verified by scanning our QR codes. Visit hourglassonlinestore.com. Iagon's vision is to create a global supercomputer powered by artificial intelligence and blockchain technology. And with me is the CEO of Navjeet Dalawal to explain more about Iagon. So um, this sounds very futuristic. Navjeet, can you kind of give me a summary of what Iagon is doing? Yeah, nice to, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so Iagon is the first decentralized cloud uh, computing and storage platform uh, that bridges decentralization with regulation. Uh, enabling us to target enterprise clients. Uh, we have three pilot customers, uh, two enterprise and one academia. Uh, we have grants from Innovation Norway, uh, which is a government funded. And we just recently closed uh, a funding round of 3.4 million USD. Uh, we're led by four PhDs that are experts in decentralized computing, AI, cloud computing, architecture, and business development. Wow. That's a short summary. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it sounds very interesting. How did the idea of Iagon come to you? Yeah, so the idea actually originated from the healthcare sector, me being from the healthcare sector. It's, uh, uh, it was originally the idea was to secure medical files uh, and data privacy. 
uh, for for sensitive data. Uh, eventually, it evolved around and um, and it came into more generic uh, solution in, involving all sensitive type of data uh, and being more GDPR compliant. Okay. Now, when I when I think of these fields, I think of the huge company Google and IBM is in blockchain and they've got you know a quantum computer and things like that. I mean, how do you differentiate yourself from some of these big giants in tech? Yeah, definitely. I mean, they have a lot of backing, a lot of staff, and, and it's hard to compete against such uh, big companies. Uh, but we, we were coming up with a unique idea. We're uh, lowering our costs by up to 80%, and it's uh, we're using uh, unused resource capacities. So anyone with a, a smart device, anyone with a mobile device or even a laptop or a data storage center could share their resources with us. And in return, receive a, a revenue stream for that for that resources. That's why we're able to reduce prices up to eighty percent, and that helps us compete against them. But, and furthermore, we're uh, focusing a lot of our attention on GDPR compliance. There was a couple of months ago there uh, there was an article about Google getting fined one hundred mil in EU uh, for not being GDPR compliant, and the other giants have said not to be able to be GDPR compliant because of how their infrastructure is cur currently. So a lot of enterprise solutions are looking at alternative solutions that help them be compliant. And that's what we're focusing on. Okay. And I think regulation could be coming in the U.S. as well. So <laughs> you yeah, might definitely. be positioned. Our primary, yeah, definitely. Our primary focus is on uh, uh, GDPR in the beginning, mm -hmm. but we can, we're, move, we're moving over to U.S. and HIPAA compliance and different types of other compliances that, that we'll implement later on. So, and you've also got increased encryption, some other security features. Can you tell me about those? Yeah, I mean, it, it, once you send a file to, for example, Iagon, we, we encrypt it and we slice it and we spread it across the network and we store the Pacific hash or the fingerprint of the file on the blockchain. So it's a dual layer security. What we call in the centralized world, or let's say in Google Cloud or Dropbox, we call what we, when we send a file to them, it's it's stored in a data lake. So uh, if you take a lake, for example, which is surrounded by a fence, if, a, if there's a security breach, someone can hop over that fence and swim in the lake and collect all the data. Uh, so what we, what we call our solution is a frozen lake, basically. So if you jump over the cybersecurity fence, you, you beat a frozen lake. There's no way to penetrate that data. There's no way to see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for coming and uh, sharing the story of Iagon and best of luck. On my show, I put no barriers between myself